Hey guys, my name is Austin from AwfulMedia.com and in this short video I am going to show you how to use the AMP inventory system in your Unity project. The AMP inventory system is an asset you can buy from AwfulMedia.com for $8.50. It is on sale currently. You can get it for $7.65. The AMP inventory system is a an inventory system that you can use in just about any game type you want to uh, you want to create it is easy to set up and easy to extend and I have a pretty extensive help doc already set up and I'm adding to it as I think of things there's a few more things I need to add that um, should go up here pretty soon so if you're going to be using this check back to it if you have any questions before asking on the forum or via email View the demo if you want to check out what you're getting and follow the installation instructions to install it if you do not want to watch this video. But in this video I will show you how to install it from scratch and how to, I guess, kind of get started with it. It's going to be very short though, so it's not really a get started, it's just a, a short introduction. And really this, this video is going to be a promotion for the product covered up in a short tutorial. And that's just really all it's going to be. I apologize for the background noise. It is extremely hot in the office today, so I have to turn my fans up on the computer, and it does make an awful noise. So to get started with this, after you purchased the product, it'll send you an email, and this email will send you a link that you can download this uh, AMP inventory asset with. You'll get just the asset package file. It does not come zipped up or anything, so it's extremely easy to get to and get started with. And to import it into Unity, what you'll do is go to Assets, go to Import Package, and I will go to Custom Package. And I have a couple here. The new version currently is 1.1. I'm going to click Open and open that up in there and import everything that's in that package. It'll do some work. And there we go. Now, if I click up here on this toolbar, I'll get the AMP button. I can click that, and I have an inventory drop down, and I can go to Install. Notice there's nothing over here, but when I go to install, it'll detect to see if I have any objects, uh, or any objects that it, that it requires, and if it does, it'll give me buttons to install those with. So I need the AMP inventory object, it creates that, and I need the database object, and it creates that. And that's all we need the install window for, so now pretty much we have an inventory in our game. There's no way to use it yet, but it's there. So I'm going to go to the inventory object. Now over here I have a few basic options for modifying the inventory uh, just from the inspector. The first thing is I can turn off the display of stats if you don't want to display the stats like I have them you can just toggle them there or you can go into the code and just remove them altogether. Just an easy way to toggle that on and off though. I then have a, a drop down here you can decide what key you want the inventory to be bound to by default or you can set up your own system for that with um, the inventory or the the input manager in Unity. Just another quick way to get started with it there. The skin, I have to assign that before I can use this. It comes with an AMP skin. You can apply that and start using the default textures. And if you want to modify the appearance of the inventory, all you have to do is modify the AMP skin itself. It uses these textures at the moment, but go in here and modify the custom styles under here, under custom styles, and here are the textures that I'm using currently. So under inventory I have a few more options. I can modify the slot size, the padding, the row count, and the column count. These do what they say, uh, but I'll show you that here in a second whenever we run the game. Then I have equipped weapon, which will show me the current weapon that I have equipped, and same thing for shield. Inventory size, is the position and uh, size of the inventory window. So now to get started, I'm going to click play and see what happens. Hit everything will freeze. I hit I and I have an inventory uh, window ready to go. There's a button here that says save inventory. It's just to show you how to go about saving it in a very basic way. You can remove that button simply from the code and get rid of that completely. It's just there as an example for saving the inventory. And loading the inventory is the same thing, just done in reverse. Here's the stat window I was talking about. So if I toggle that off, notice it goes away. Pretty simple stuff. But the important stuff over here is the slot size. I can modify that at runtime and everything's fine. Everything scales with it. The slot padding, same thing with that. 
can modify that. The row count and the uh, the row count and the column count cannot be modified at runtime without causing some issues. Uh, that will be fixed, I'm sure, because it's just a simple thing. I just overlooked it. It'll be fixed pretty soon in a in a, a newer version. But if I was to go out of uh, the game and modify this to say I want eight rows and two columns, that's okay. Go here, hit I. I have eight rows and two columns. Pretty simple, and it's all pretty dynamic when you change things like that. I think that is key to making something easy to work with, is just have simple interfaces, an easy way to interact with it, and the inventory size, if I wanted to change the position of this, notice it's zero, zero, as by default. If I change the X, I can push it over wherever I want it, and the Y, wherever I want it. Now in the future, this may be in a window, in a GUI window you can drag around. It's a very simple fix, very simple patch, so I may do that in the future. But that's how you position it for now, and you can add it in a window if you want to, if you want to get that ability uh, at this moment. The next thing is adding items to your item database. This is quite easy with the AMP Inventory Item Manager. All you do here is this will list all the items you currently have in your game right here. And it also has a way to create items. Very simple stuff here. So I have, let's create a couple items. The first one will be a long sword. Getting a little lag from something, okay. Item ID is zero. The item description will be a sword that, ooh, a sword that is long. The item type will be sword. And I have a guide in the help docs to adding and modifying item attributes. So say you don't want to have type, or you need type, I guess. Say you don't want to have rarity. You can just remove that by following the document, or you can add in your own, whatever. It's not the most straightforward path at the moment, but the, uh, the guide is definitely step by step, so you should not have an issue with doing that. Value. This is worth, I'll say, it's worth 12. This is actually an uncommon item. We'll do that, an uncommon item. It doesn't have any effect on the uh, inventory presentation at this moment. So you can do something with the item rarity if you want to, say, uh, modify the drop tables based on the rarity of the items, which is something you would do. Wait, again, something you can work with if you want to incorporate that. I just added in a few attributes that I thought might be useful to uh, not so specific games, so you can modify these all you want to. The item game object is just the real world object, and this will definitely have a use in the future whenever I add the ability to equip uh, uh, swords and shields. That'll be something in the future. I'll get it set up where you can assign the bone that the uh, weapon and shield goes to, and then it will spawn the real world object at that position. It's pretty simple again, just not something I got to in the first release, but I'll definitely get to it. Now the stats, this is a 12 power, 4 attack speed, the 2 range, the icon is a longsword. And I'm going to cr uh, click Create Item, and there we have Longsword with a delete button there and the attributes that we can modify within this window as well. Now all this is really doing is it's being a, it's an inspector in itself that interacts with the items list from the item database. So notice that right there is the same thing. But the problem I have with this is, first of all, I don't like I don't like the way this works, because if I were to add another item, let's add two items, and I'll name, let me close that, this middle one here, I'll name this one Short Sword, okay? So we have Long Sword, Short Sword, Long Sword. Say my game no longer has a long, uh, Short Sword in it, I want to remove Short Sword from that. How do I do that? Hmm, I don't know. So I could just decrease the size and then move all these up one, but that would be a lot of work. I could just change this name to something else and just make a new item or a null item or something and that'd be fine or I could just have a button that I click that deletes it. I like that. So that's the way I did it and I, I don't know, I think it is quite a handy little editor. So I'll make another item here so we have a couple items to play around with. I have longsword, then I'll have a potion. This is a consumable and it is common has a value of 10, has no weight, and the item would be just another cube, but they're all named for some reason. 
the icon will be a health potion and the stats are none zip so now we have a potion as you can see over here and that's all I'm going to work with for now so we have a long sword and a potion add whatever you want to and uh, make your game however you wish so I have two items now how do I add these items to my player inventory that is another part of this little introduction that I want to cover even though I cover it in the docs I want to cover it in this to show you how easy it, it really is so under inventory I will go to scripts and I will find the inventory class open that up this is the class that handles the player inventory item is the item definitions class item database is the class that contains a list of items player stats is something we'll get to here in a second that fan is just going at it okay so what we have here is the inventory class and down here under start which means it happens right when this class is initialized in game is a bunch of methods being called these are add item add item is a method you call and you pass it the parameter of the ID for the item so 0 1 which reminds me I did not change the ID of the of the potion all items have to have a unique ID because the whole thing is based on the ID of the item so I want to add item 0 which is the short sword or the long sword and add item 1 which is the potion okay so when we do that when I start my inventory should contain it does a sword and a potion very simple to do now with a sword with it being of item type sword that means it is one of two items or one of two item types that can be equipped so I just right click on that and it will equip that sword for me and it throws a print here for some reason and that is now adding to my player stats the power that it has 12 power and 12 gold for some reason and I can also drink this potion does nothing at this moment as you can see I added in a warning to remind you insert the consumable effect for item potion and that's easy to do in a switch statement I'll show you that really quickly what I have here is a switch based on the ID and you say case the item ID is 0 do this effect case the item ID is 1 do this effect and it's really easy to do unique effects for any consumable item you want to the next thing is the included player stats class now this is a very basic class I got this from hmm I was watching I think it was a live stream not sure but the idea for doing this came from some stream I think I was watching when somebody's making a game and they included a class that was very similar to this one and I thought well it could be something I could just throw into the inventory to show how to work with stats if you wanted to add stats to uh, the player based on items equipped so I did that it has a leveling system for your combat level or your uh, main level whatever terminology you would like to use and the main level is increased by adding experience to your player and I do that here as you can see player stats not grant experience I'm adding 7800 experience which gets me to level gets me to level 12 then I have 756 out of 1282 remaining the amount of experience required goes up for each level you go up and the base stats go up for each level you go up as well just something to play around with you can modify these equations to be whatever you want for your game just a basis oops, hit the mic just a basis for you to work off of and I cannot think of anything else to cover in this video I will be doing more videos most likely in the future that covers this product uh, as it progresses I do want to add a couple of things in I want to add the ability to equip items uh, basic items not nothing that involves uh, animating objects and stuff like that I want to do like a sword a shield maybe a helmet of some kind because those are always just pretty much bound to a specific bone and then they move with a bone but when you have items that have to uh, morph and the mesh has to be animated to go along with the player object that gets a bit more tricky and a bit more based off of your game so I'm going to do the basic ones and show you how to go about equipping stuff and you can worry about the uh, more advanced stuff and then there's one more thing I want to add I cannot remember what it is 
I had a suggestion for an item bar of some kind where you can uh, drag items to uh, like a hot bar and you can use them from there, consumable items. And I already have that in a game I was working on a while back, so that would not be too hard to do. So if you're interested in that for this product, then let me know. And I want to make the window draggable. I'm thinking about just using the GUI window system that it comes with Unity, but I don't like that. I may just run my own thing. It's pretty simple to do, so not that big of a deal. But I'm just figuring out which way is the best to go. So look forward to the updates. If you like this product, they will come free. And uh, we'll work out how to, how to get all that done here in the future. So if you want this AMP inventory product, go to awfulmedia.com. And purchase it from there. It goes to uh, goes to a storefront that will take you to PayPal to pay, and everything is handled directly from there. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.